to use the capital asset pricing model to calculate the cost of equity, you need to know the risk-free rate, the expected rate of return on the market, and the beta of the relevant company. If the company is listed, its beta can be estimated using a linear regression applied to publicly available data obtained from the relevant stock exchange. If the company is unlisted, no such data is available and an alternative method is required for estimating beta. Let's take a look at the principles involved. Beta is a function of two main components, business risk and financial risk. Business risk depends on revenue cyclicality and operating leverage. Although we do not need to go into great detail for this video, we note in passing that revenue cyclicality is the way in which sales react to changes in the business cycle, and operating leverage is the relationship between variable and fixed costs. Financial risk depends on the proportionate amount of debt in the company as measured by the DE ratio, as well as the corporate tax rate. Before continuing, some terminology. There are two other names for a company's total beta. Equity beta, and the term we will be using in this discussion, levered beta. Note that if a beta has no label, it is assumed to be levered beta. The beta attributable to the business risk of the company is also known by different names. It is sometimes called asset beta, but in this context we will instead be referring to it as unlevered beta. The part of beta which is related to financial risk is often referred to as financial leverage. This is the source of the names given to the two versions of beta just introduced. Beta, which includes the financial leverage component, is called levered beta. Beta, which excludes financial risk, is referred to as unlevered beta. In 1972, Robert Amada published a method for converting beta between its levered and unlevered forms. Given the DE ratio and the tax rate, unlevered beta can be calculated from levered beta or the other way around. Let's see how all of this can be used to estimate the beta for an unlisted company. Such a company has no directly observable beta, but it is very likely to have a peer group of listed companies that do have known betas. Such companies, called comparables, will be in the same industry sector as the unlisted company. The comparables are assumed to have similar business risk to the unlisted company. However, the comparables and the unlisted company are unlikely to have the same financial risk because of the wide range of different possible capital structures. If the business risks are similar, but the financial risks are different, the levered betas will not be directly comparable. Therefore, we can't simply use the comparables levered beta as our estimate of beta for the unlisted company. But we now know that we can convert beta between its levered and unlevered versions. So, we start with the comparables average levered beta and use their average DE and tax rate to calculate an average unlevered beta for the comparables. Because business risk is similar, that unlevered beta for the comparables is treated as a suitable estimate of unlevered beta for the unlisted company. Then all that remains is to relieve a beta, but this time using the DE and the tax rate of the unlisted company. The result is an estimate of the full beta for the unlisted company suitable for use in a CAPM calculation of its cost of equity. In summary, and showing the required equations, step one is to identify a suitable listed peer group with known betas. 
Step two is to unlever the peer group average beta using the average DE and tax rate. And finally, step three is to relever the peer group unlevered beta using the DE and tax rate of the unlisted company.